Kyle Dubas is out as general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs. So we're hopping back in before the show actually begins to break this down very quickly. Uh, So the news came from some insiders just a few moments ago, and the team has released a statement as well, uh, making the news official. Uh, So the Leafs announced that Kyle Dubas will not return as general manager of the Maple Leafs next season. Uh, Brendan Shanahan announced today that the club has decided to part ways with Dubas. Dubas's contract is set to expire on June 30th and he will not return. Uh, Quote, I would like to thank Kyle for his unwavering dedication over these last nine seasons with the organization, including his last five as general manager. Kyle fostered a great culture within our dressing room and staff and consistently pushed to make our team better season over season. We wish Kyle and his family the best moving forward and thank him for his valuable contributions. Sean, Mm -hmm. do you have a thought on the news that Kyle Dubas will not return in Toronto? And I think the, the almost kind of hidden note there is that we're like processing this in real time too. (laughs) Totally. And as I'm reading through that, you kind of notice and start to underline the club has decided to part ways with general manager mm-hmm. Kyle Dubas. I think the longer we went from his presser a few days mm-hmm. ago when he said, I'm either going to be the GM of this team or I'm not going to be doing anything next year. We're three days out from that now or whatever. The longer we went without hearing anything definitive in the way of his plans regard or, or the Maple Leafs plans for him, I think an outcome like this became more and more likely. Like, was I surprised to see Elliot Friedman pop up to uh, he? Cause apologies if he wasn't first time, I assume he was certainly the first person I saw with the, with the scoop. Was I surprised to see that maybe initially and maybe briefly, but this makes sense. I'm not, I, you you can't, you can't say you were shocked because he kind of, he came out and, got about 50% of the way to this a few days ago, right? Where he's talking about the stress on his family and and uh, and that end of things. You combine it with the fact that this team underachieved again and has underachie- underachieved consistently despite the work he's done and despite the fact that, you know, there is a wild amount of talent on that team. They've had a wild amount of regular season success. Uh, this was a, it was a, they're in a tough spot and something needed to change. Yeah. I don't know if this yep. is the right. I don't know if this is the the right top line. I don't know if they're a better team now than they were six hours ago. I don't know if they're a better organization now than they were six hours ago. I think that's the question. But something needed to happen, and this is a big, big domino to fall. Yep, absolutely. And I think, as you said, it's not totally surprising. Although there were some reports from Elliot that they were working on an extension, but then those conversations had stopped. Um, so it's tough again, as we're kind of talking about this in real time, like, did it stop because of his presser? Did it stop because something Kyle said in those conversations, did it stop from something, uh, from the tippity top of MLSE or somebody else came down and said, Nope, you know what? It's that's enough. I think, you know, the, the Leafs were a better team with Kyle Dubas as the general manager. Like they took steps. They did good things. The playoffs, the playoff success, the playoff results were not there. Like unequivocally, we know that. I think everyone can agree on that. Um, was this year Kyle Dubas's fault? I think that's a bigger conversation for maybe once everyone's digested this. Like, yeah, he's the one that decided to lock in those guys, those contracts. Like he did kind of create some of the cat mess, but he also did well with what he had this year. He made the changes necessary. He adapted. Um, he changed right. the way that he was building this team, right? So I have, I thought Kyle Dubas did a good job. Um but I think at the end of the day, you just kind of hope he can, like, as a human, you hope Kyle Dubes can just, like, get the <laughs> get the rest, get the sure. removal I mean, from sure. it. And, you know, I'm sure that's somebody who's going to be back in the NHL once he gets a year. He uh, That's not the last we've seen of Kyle Dubas. He just maybe needs some time to chill after that. It was his, it was his organizational decision to go into a season with Ilya Samsonov and Matt Murray is the goaltenders, right? Like it was, it was his, for better Samson or worse. wasn't the reason they lost though. <clears throat> Kyle Dubas 
as the general, as the main decision maker in that hockey ops department, does not get to take credit for every good decision that's made in skate on the bad ones. It's just the way it is, and and that and that that's I don't that does, I don't mean that to sound like accusatory or or, or whatever sure. to him. That's no, just totally. the nature of being a boss, right? Yeah. That's the way it goes. So if you look at all the things that they've done right in the roster as it stands and the way it's been built out over the last couple of years, is are is the good stuff like dire- directly attributed to him? Ab- absolutely. But also, this is a team that got embarrassed in the second round again. And and look, sir, we we spent. You're, you guys are probably about to hear it. 15 minutes gassing up Sergei Bobrovsky, right? Mm-hmm. He was unconscious in that series. If he's, a, if he's a little bit worse, is the outcome different? Yes. But he wasn't, and they lost. Yeah. And they lost in five games. So and, and so that's just uh, that's kind of the, the nature of the thing, right? The other the other part here that I think is worth is worth um noting. I don't know that I necessarily agree with this from a player standpoint, but you hear guys say it when they when they get older, and maybe it turns into a year by year decision as to whether they'll return or not. But it's not something you hear from um, you hear from you from coaches too. It's not something you hear necessarily from from general managers. Yeah, I, they needed like a reset, <laughs> or that. Or when someone's openly like, I don't know what I want to do. Like, do I do I want to yeah. be here? Like, because that's what he I was saying. I appreciated what, that from Dubas. Totally, totally. But if you apply, if you take that logic and and you and you and I've I've talked to players about this. I've I've we've all we've all heard it. A popular kind of refrain is like, once you start thinking that way, you're already you might already be done. Like, if if you need to convince sure. yourself to come back, and and if it really is a difficult decision then that may have already answered the question. And does that apply to general managers? I think so. I think so. I think it applies to anybody in any field. If you are that conflicted yeah. about whether to continue doing a job or, or, to, or to continue on in a place, a lot of times you're already telling yourself what your move should be. And maybe that was, maybe that was Dubas's decision. Maybe it was mutual. Maybe it was more one sided because again, you picked up on that wording in the in the statement. I think that's important. Yeah. We're gonna have some answers answers from Brent from Brendan Shanahan in a little bit less than three hours here because we're talking about yep. this at twelve nineteen on the dot Eastern, and he's mm-hmm. gonna speak at three. So we'll find yep. out more eventually. But the the, the the shoe the- dropped this morning, baby. And I think Leafs fans were expecting it. I'd seen a lot of Leafs people on Twitter saying like, all right, is today the day? Like, it's been really quiet. What's going on? Like, who's going to be the GM next year? Who's going to be the coach? Because there's a lot of unrestricted free agents on this roster. There's a lot of very important contracts coming up. Austin Matthews is up in a year. He's already said he would like to have that sorted out like this summer. Mm -hmm. William Nylander's coming up in a year. Um, There's a lot of work to be done in Toronto. So, now the big question is who's going to be the one that does it all is it going to be brandon pridham Mm -hmm. is it going to be somebody internal like that is it going to be somebody external like they need to get this right now dubis is out like oh thanks captain obvious you got to get the new hire right but it it's very like there's a lot of work to be done and you need the right person in that seat is it going to be an eric tolsky uh brad true living who's t- apparently you know according Being, to reports not allowed to interview until yeah. his contract is up on june 30th which basically says good luck next year tree which is ridiculous um and it or, adds and know, it adds some other comp- external candidate and it adds competition to the hiring process for specifically the pittsburgh penguins because that is a team uh-huh. i know and I, and, and I don't mean to sell short the calgary flames who are also looking for a general manager right the Penguins are looking They're to probably, spend money. It sounds like the betting favorite is Conroy, but yes. Right. Fenway Sports has cast a big net, and they want to spend money, and they want to hire yep. two guys. I shouldn't say two guys, two people specifically. Sure. They, yep. they want a president, and they want a general manager. So you have mm-hmm. two executive spots in Pittsburgh that need to be filled. And yep. now you're talking about the GM of the, of the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, yep. job being open. Yeah, well. they're probably there's gonna be a lot of crossover. There's probably mm-hmm. they're probably gonna interview oh, some similar I'm, candidates I'm and certain, the price is I gonna go certain up. There will be. That's why yep. I haven't 
I haven't even talked about the potential of Tulski in Calgary because it's like there's no like no yep. if Tulski's going to get a GM job this year it's going to be somewhere that's probably going to pay him uh, a lot more than the Flames might um, so yeah that's the big news today it opens up a lot of questions who's going to be the next general manager of this team is the obvious one what's next for Kyle Dubas that likely gets kicked down the road hey maybe he does a full turnaround maybe he ends up being gm of the pittsburgh penguins but as of last you know last week a couple days ago he said i need a break i'm not going to do that um what does this mean for sheldon keith the rest Mm -hmm. of the bench um what does it mean for austin matthews yes that yes (laughs) what does that mean for the guys who were you know drafted had their contract signed have been working with kyle dubas you know who wants Mm -hmm. bigger tickets this summer uh, so lots to dig into. That was that was with done Toronto too. this summer. The Maple Leafs lost a week ago. Like that's when they were eliminated, mm-hmm. right? And it continued dragging on, and it continued dragging on, and we're now seven, a little bit less than seven actual calendar days away from away from the moment they lost. It's going to be interesting to see if we ever find out exactly what the process was like and exactly what the last seven days were like. Because again, I just keep coming back to the fact that the moment you say that, if you're Kyle Dubas, you're telling us something. And it's one thing to say it immediately in the wake of a loss, right? It's another to sit there and sleep on it and then sleep on it. And then sleep on it a few more times. Like at, at at a certain point, you can imagine them being like, all right. Or or him being like, all right. <laughs> at some point, yeah. you need to want to do the job. And and if and if that's not a place that he could get to after after all the stress of, of the last however many years of his life, I couldn't blame him. But it's May 19th, you know? 